Hello vinyl record collectors. Today I'd like to show you a few psychedelic records or pop psychedelic records from my collection. One of my favorite groups is Ultimate Spinach on the MGM label. Group that formed in 1967. They are part of the Boston sound that try to compete against the San Francisco sound back in the 60s. They put out three albums. I have the first two. The third album, from what I've heard, is not very good, and that's the result of the personnel changes made in the group after the second album. So um, I haven't bothered to buy that one. The next one is the Head Shop on the Epic label. This is a band out of New York. This album was recorded in 1969. The Head Shop was originally called Household Sponge. On this album, one of the uh, guest artists is Larry Coryell. On this album, they do two Beatles songs, as well as their rendition of Sunday. It's a very good psychedelic album. The next album, it's sort of psychedelic, sort of hard to say, I'm going to take this one out of cover. Coven Witchcraft. This is the one that uh, they destroy our minds and rebirth souls. It's my understanding that this album got banned not long after it came out. It's on the Mercury label. And I think the reason for being banned is they have a black mass recorded. Plus it doesn't help when you have nude women being sacrificed on the altar. And here's the contents of the black mass. The uh, vocalist here is Esther Jinx Dawson. Not too bad, pretty good. And they had one member on this um, recording that was not actually a member of the group. Uh, I think his name is James Vincent, who came from the band Aorta. This is a group that was out of Chicago. I think it was recorded in 1969. Uh, the uh, next group, HP Lovecraft, group out of Chicago, got started around 1967. They're on the Phillips label. Named after the writer H.P. Lovecraft, who I believe used to write uh, horror stories. Next record is Deacon Street. Named after um, Street in Boston, I think. Band that got together in the late 60s on the MGM label. Also part of that Boston sound. This one is a little bit more on the pop side. The Boston Tea Party. And despite the name, they're not from Boston. The group was formed out of Burbank, California in 1963. Another band with tea in the name, The Tea Company. Originally formed in 1963 as The Naturals. This album came out in 1968. My understanding of the reference T here is actually a reference to marijuana. This group performed mostly in the northeast part of the United States when they were touring places like New York State. That's one Joe Bird and the Field Hippies. The American Metaphysical Circus, I think it was recorded in 1969. Joe Bird came from the group United States of America. This is all over the place. You've got some psychedelic stuff on here. And you've got some stuff in here that sounds almost like ragtime music. Very diverse album. Very interesting. And speaking of the United States of America, here is the album. 
here. Recorded in 1967. Again with Joe Bird. I think this is the only album put out by this group. And then they disbanded afterwards. One album a little bit different. There's an album by Serge Gainsborough. who was mostly noted for doing a lot of work in the 60s with the Yay Yay Girls producer. This is actual pressing I got from Paris, France. It be an original pressing on the Phillips label. Done in 1961. It's a concept album. Basically, it's about an individual who drives a Rolls Royce, strikes a young girl on the bike, and they subsequently have a uh, relationship together. But this is, if you haven't heard this, this is something to really check out. This is certainly different. Here's one that's an interesting album, The Wind in the Willows, the name of the album and the band. The interesting part about this is, uh, well, my member is Deborah Harry, who went on eventually to be the lead singer for Blondie. This is the only album they put out, but there is rumors I've heard that they actually did record a second album, and the, um, the tapes, the master tapes or whatever, were lost. So, and the producer of this album eventually went on to uh, produce the Woodstock Music Festival. And finally, last album, Jimi Hendrix. Gotta include Jimi Hendrix in any psychedelic collection. This is obviously the UK pressing Electric Lady Land with the uh, cover of the Nude Women on it. Jeremy Hendrix did a lot of great stuff, and I would classify some of his stuff as psychedelic. Probably some of it is a little bit more blues-oriented. Blues but uh, that's a short introduction to some of the psychedelic records I have in my collection. Thank you very much for watching.